I think it's time that you test your bebop skills. So that you know where you're at with your solos. For some of them, I'm very happy that I learned them early on, but there are also a few that I really wish that I learned and figured out a bit earlier. But I'm going to talk about that along the way. This is essential for bebop and luckily something that I was taught early on, both by my teachers in Denmark and at the Barry Harris workshop in The Hague. If you transcribe or analyze bebop solos, maybe even just jazz solos in general, you'll see that most of the arpeggios are played as one octave melodies and not the large full positions that we're usually taught on guitar. And it really makes a lot more sense to focus on practicing things that you actually need in your solo. So you want to practice your diatonic arpeggios in any scale that you want to use in a solo. But what is maybe more important is of course that you also want to practice using those arpeggios in your lines. So the real question is, can you use these one octave arpeggios in your solos? And remember that even if you don't pass the test in this video, then it's still going to give you some things that you can add to your playing that really will improve how you sound and it's also just fun to keep score. The great thing about the diatonic arpeggio exercise is that it gives you a lot of material. And the second most important arpeggio for a chord is the arpeggio found on the third of the chord. This is all over bebop solos and something you want to have in your vocabulary for sure. Again, something that I learned from Barry Harris. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at a 2 5 one in C major. So D minor seven to G seven to C major seven. And here you have an F major seven arpeggio from the third of D minor seven, which is really giving you the sound of the chord and then adding a ninth on top. And for the G seven, you have B half diminished, which essentially does the same thing giving you a ninth on the G7. A line using these two could be something like this. And on the D minor seven chord, you have the F major seven here. And the B half diminished on the G7 is here. Do you use the arpeggio from the third of the chord in your solos? Keep track and leave your score in the comments. This is something that's actually pretty tricky for a lot of guitarists, probably because it's so difficult to learn to play sustained notes on the guitar, that once we learn it, we don't ever want to do anything else. But bebop is actually called bebop because of the way a phrase ends. So you want to be able to play phrases that end with bebop. I don't remember when I started getting this right, but I'm pretty sure it was after quite some time. It wasn't really something that I was taught or that my teachers pointed out to me, but it is a really great skill to work towards. If you really want to know whether you have this down, then try to record yourself soloing and listen to how often you end on a short note and on the offbeat. You may think you have it, but maybe not. This is usually one of the first things associated with bebop chromatic passing notes, even though that's actually something that you have in a lot of other styles of music as well. The basic principle is of course just to add chromatic passing notes that resolve to the next note in the melody, just to create a short moment of tension and some forward motion in the line. This can be used in a lick which is actually almost a parka lick like this. It's probably likely that you already knew this one, but the complicated cousin of the chromatic passing note that's a different story. These types of melodies really blew my mind when I first came across them with Pat Martino and Joe Pass. This is where chromatic phrases really start to become interesting. These melodies are also a lot less common in other genres of music. The idea is to have a short melody with chromatic passing notes that move around the target note and there are many different variations that you can use. Here you have a chromatic enclosure before the C and also a long chromatic phrase targeting the high B. And you definitely want to have this in your playing if you want to sound like bebop. Playing arpeggios as eighth note triplets is a great rhythmical part of the bebop vocabulary, also something that really pays off to practice through your scales, both for technique and because it's great vocabulary. The first variation is to play the arpeggio as a triplet with the leading note. That will give you this exercise. But you can also drop the leading note and then play this variation. And you can put that to use in phrases like this. Here I'm using the E minor seven arpeggio with a leading note and then following that up with a C major seven triplet arpeggio without the leading note. You practice your triplet arpeggios, right? This is probably one of the bebop secrets. At least it seemed magic to me when I was trying to figure it out 
and kept failing miserably. But actually, this is something that you can easily work on and start using in your playing. And that also goes for the next skills that I'm going to cover. They're much more about how you play something than what you play. Because I think that's actually what most people are missing and what really makes the difference. The concept is pretty simple. Here's a one octave C major seven arpeggio. And then instead of just playing a continuous ascending melody, then you can play the first note and then move the rest down an octave to get this great melodic skip in there. And you can use that to create lines like this 251 where I'm using it twice. And here you have the F major 7 arpeggio as an octave displaced or pivot arpeggio on the D minor 7. And then on the G7 you have the B half diminished. Did you get a point for this? Similar to the octave displaced arpeggios, then this is a great melodic skill that is really also a great part of the bebop language, adding skips between notes and scale melodies. Mastering this really helps you get rid of these endless, boring scale run licks that are more likely to put the audience asleep than to get them to applaud. This is especially effective between two notes that are a half step apart. So for uh, C major seven, if you have the notes C and B, then you can add the third in between them, so. Here you have the aperture from the third of the chord, in this case E minor seven, and then a chromatic run where I then insert this low E between the C and the B. And you probably recognize this from the solos that you've heard from George Benson or Pat Martino. The question for the test results is, are you like George and Pat? Another melodic embellishment that makes your solo sound more interesting is to add some 16th note turns or trills. I'm actually not 100% sure what the name is, but feel free to leave suggestions in the comments. This is actually something that I think I could still use a bit more in my own playing, and I have quite a lot of fun just trying to get it in there more and more. This type of phrase also helps you to not get stuck with boring eighth note lines, since it helps you change direction and also add some variation to the rhythm. You can just add an arpeggio run to it, and then it's already a great bebop line. Did you fail already, or are these last skills helping the score? This type of trill can also really change things up and make your lines sound a lot better. This is all over Parker and past solos, and also turned into a repeated figure by both Grant Green and Wes Montgomery. On guitar, this is usually executed with legato playing, which makes it easier to play the fast-moving trill and also gives it a more fluid sound. And you can put this to use in a line like this. One thing that really makes a huge difference for your playing is that you work on exercises that closely match what you want to play. If you want to play creative bebop lines, then work on exercises that help you master that sound and build the technique you need for that type of vocabulary. So check out this video if you want to work on that because there are some great scale exercises that are practically already bebop licks. And don't forget to share your score in the comments.